no. human reproductive system. No. Guys, yeah. listen. Human reproductive system. Yeah. What? Wait, you said we were going to send your We are. After. All right, so. What? Uh, we don't. Well, this is what we're doing next. So, the reproductive system. Um, we will be quiet. Caleb, not another word. I'll see you be here after school. So, reproductive system we talked about um, when we talked about the characteristics and needs of living things, because all species must be able to reproduce in order for the species to continue. Yeah. So the purpose of the reproductive system is to create new organisms, to make babies. <clears throat> There's going to be a little overlap um, because we already talked about, for example, testes and ovaries in which body system? Okay, so endocrine. endocrine system. Because they are also endocrine organs. So the testes are um, responsible for producing testosterone. We know that from our study of the endocrine system. But they also are a reproductive organ because they're responsible for producing sperm cells. And all organisms that reproduce sexually, um, there are male and female, what we call sex cells or gametes. In animals, we call them sperm and egg cells. Um, so the sperm cell is the male reproductive cell, the male gamete, and we'll talk about um, its structure in a minute. But testosterone is a hormone, as we know, and it's responsible for development of female secondary sex, I mean male secondary sex characteristics, <laughs> such as, what's one? Belle? A deep voice. A deeper voice. Liam? Yeah. Body hair. Body hair, facial hair. Oh, it's definition of muscle. Muscle tone, yes. All those things are controlled by testosterone, this hormone produced in the testes. Also, if you studied um, steroids and health and learned about the health effects, um, testosterone is, or a testosterone-like compound is what most steroids are. And it also can influence aggressiveness and anger. Um, testosterone has um, effects on the brain as well, on mood, and so um, it affects that as well. But really, these are endocrine functions, not so much reproductive functions. <clears throat> So, Mr. Duras, yes. Um, how would those like athletes be able to uh, uh, like how how is the testosterone made for in steroids? Some is like just synthetic, like it's a testosterone-like compound that can be made in a lab, like a medication could. You know, they can make synthetic hormones and give them to people. Would that also work with girls or not? Yeah, it does. Like if you ever watch like the super huge female bodybuilders, most. Most of them that are really, really huge are taking testosterone. Um, so yeah. All right, well let's get on to reproductive function. So the male sex cell is a sperm cell. This is what one looks like, a single sperm cell. It has this, um, the head area where the chromosomes are. Uh, each sperm cell contains 23 chromosomes, half of what a normal cell has. And then there's a little area just behind the head of the sperm. That's like a little motor. And then attached to that is the tail, which we would call what? Like I said tail. What? Nicola? A flagellum. It's a flagellum. Just like um, just like you, Glena has a flagellum. A sperm cell has a flagellum. Um, the testes, which produce sperm uh, and testosterone, they are they're different than ovaries in the female because in females the ovaries are internal inside of the body. In males, the testes are outside of the body in the scrotum. And there's a reason for that. You guys know the reason? Mormon? Um, so they don't overheat? Yeah, because sperm are produced best at a lower temperature than body temperature. 98.6 is really too hot uh, for sperm production. So they need to be held outside of the body so that they're a little bit cooler, about three to five degrees cooler than normal body temperature. And there's two testes, um, even though all our diagrams are aside view and they only show one, but there's two. Each of them produce sperm, they both produce testosterone. And again, that keeps them a little bit cooler so that they can produce sperm efficiently.
Now these sperm cells, their ultimate destination is to get where? Ma'am? To the egg cell. That's their goal. It's their whole goal in life is to find that egg cell and fertilize. Uh, to get there, they have quite a long journey for a tiny little microscopic sperm cell. Um, and so they get there by swimming. They have a flagellum, they get there by swimming. But in order to swim, they need fluid to swim through. We call that fluid semen. Okay, semen is a, a mixture of liquids and nutrients. Uh, it also takes a lot of energy for those sperm cells to get to where they need to go. And so they absorb nutrients from the semen that gives them the energy to make that journey. If you look at a sperm cell on a microscope, they look like this. They look a lot like the pictures. The, the head of the sperm is a sort of white area. Then you have the enlarged motor and then the flagellum behind it. All right, so if we label some, uh, some organs, now these technically, only one is really a part of the reproductive system. Mostly these are what kind of organs? Excretory. Excretory, that's right. But they're in the same vicinity, and they're in our diagram, so we're going to label them and review their function. Um, ureter. Who remembers what the ureter does? Grace? The ureter is the from the kidneys to the bladder. Yeah, it carries urine from the kidneys, which should be up here a little bit, down into the urinary bladder. The urinary bladder stores that urine until it's ready to be eliminated. And when it is ready to be eliminated, travels out of the body through the urethra. Well, this is where we get into the overlap because the urethra, science carrying urine, also carries semen out of the body as well. Okay. And you can see that the urethra merges with this other long tube that we'll talk about in a second. reproductive organs. So again, testes, sometimes called testicles, uh, those are the only two words we're going to use, uh, are um, down here, there's two of them. They produce sperm and testosterone, as you said. Is it fine if we just like, lay a little on that right now? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, the testes are the scrotum, keep them cool. here they produce the sperm cells and if you follow the path those sperm cells then take this path they go up this long tube out of the scrotum into the body comes up here near the bladder loops around and then here this tube merges with the urethra okay this long tube leaving the testy and going up into the body it's called the vas deferens the vas deferens and that carries the sperm to the urethra. Does anybody know um, the name of the procedure that a man could have done if they no longer want to have children, that they can get that's sort of a permanent method of birth control for a man? It has a name. Oh. Uh, it's related to this too. No? Well, not quite take it out. I want to just know the name of the procedure because it's related to the term. I don't know what animals do Yeah, it's not quite the same, although I got a story about that. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> All right, but first, let's get to this. So, a man is called a vasectomy. Oh, yes. uh, oh, what do you do with these stories? So, a vasectomy is when uh, the doctor um, basically 
um, cuts the mass deference, just sort of snips it, and then seals off, ties off both ends that we just that are a result of that. And then when sperm are produced in the testes, they can't get out of the man's body. So therefore, he obviously can't make a woman pregnant. But um, there are other, the semen is still produced because that comes from other glands. It just does not contain any living sperm, therefore a woman can't get pregnant. So it's a, for, a permanent, it can't really be undone. Sometimes men reconsider and they can try to undo it. It's not that successful, but it's basically a permanent version uh, if a man says, no, I don't ever want to have children again. Um, there is an equivalent in, in females that we'll talk about that works in basically the same way. Um, do they put you to sleep during this? Yeah, they put you on there. Oh, what do you do? Yeah, no. Oh, the story about okay. When I um, when I was a senior in high school, I thought I wanted to be. Um, I thought I would want to be a vet, maybe. So I went and I was um, like worked like an intern with a vet in Old Forge, and so I worked in her office and helped out with everything. But one of the grossest things I had to do is when people brought their cats in to be male cats to be neutered. Um, so again, it's like a mastectomy, but it was a lot cruder because basically you put the animal under anesthesia so they don't feel anything, but then they just would grab onto the testy, pull until you heard the snap, and then do the other one. Ooh. It was really bad. Sick All right, Julianne, question. That's not how they do human vasectomy. So good news for you boys out there when you get old. Yes, Julianne. I sh what? Okay. Wow, that's a That's effective. Oh, that's effective. Because maybe, because they see that. That's effective. That's effective. All right, guys, listen. No, you question quickly. Uh, female animals, they do have to do surgery for it. Uh, yeah, Sidra? Yeah, it's basically blocking off the path for sperm to take out of the body. All right, so along the way, after sperm are released, into the vast deferens, they travel up here. Then along the way, this is the seminal vesicle, this is the prostate gland. And those two glands add fluid to the sperm cells so that um, they have those nutrients we talked about, they have a fluid that they can swim through. Now you probably, you've heard most likely the prostate gland. Um, why is that something you probably have heard of? Besides health glands, Trevor? Prostate cancer. Yeah, because prostate cancer is one of the most common forms of cancer that affects men, especially as they get older. Uh, my grandfather had prostate cancer, my father had prostate cancer. And as men get older, it's pretty common. Um, and prostate cancer is when cells in that prostate gland um, start growing out of control and start to form tumors. And so um, those, those um, some of us called prostate gland add fluids um, to the sperm cells to produce semen, and then it leaves the man's body through the urethra, which travels out of the penis. And penis is for delivering sperm into the female reproductive tract during reproduction, so that those sperm cells can go on to their ultimate destination, which is the egg cell in the oviduct. Yeah, Noah.